Welcome to PowerStop's installation guide to install brake pads and rotors on a Ford F-150. This covers the front pad and rotor installation for the PowerStop kit part number K3167-36. Be advised that specific torque specs and other details are dependent on your specific year and model's trim package, and may differ from the ones listed here. The vehicle we used for demonstration is a 2017 Ford F-150 XLT, but this part number also covers the front brakes for the following vehicles. All other Ford F-150 six-lug models from 2010 to 2020. All Ford Expeditions from 2010 to 2020. And all Lincoln Navigators from 2010. This kit is a fantastic application for most F-150 drivers. It is made for towing and carrying heavy loads in a larger vehicle. All of the parts are an exact OE fit and a bolt-on upgrade with no modifications to your vehicle. In addition to the pads and rotors, a Z23, Z26, or Z36 kit ordered from PowerStop is guaranteed to contain all new hardware and brake loop to ensure you have everything you need for a brake upgrade made easy. Your old pads may look slightly different than your new ones. Ford has updated the pad design for this application, and PowerStop has complied with the update to maintain the OEM fitment. For your install, we'll go over getting started and what equipment you'll need. Some safety pointers and safety equipment, prepping your F-150 for the install, the installation procedure of removing and installing your new brake pads and rotors, finalizing everything before lowering the vehicle, performing the break-in procedure to ensure optimal performance. Have the following parts and specialty tools available before you start pad and rotor installation. You'll need power stop brake pads, power stop rotors, a bottle of brake fluid as specified in the owner's manual, brake component lube, a caliper piston clamp or a C-clamp, a jack and jack stands rated for the weight of the vehicle, safety gloves and glasses, brake parts cleaner, a foot-pound torque wrench, a bottle of anti-seize, a wire brush, ratchet and sockets sizes 13 and 21 millimeters, a breaker bar or pipe to extend your ratchet, and finally you may need a pry bar or a rubber mallet to remove rusted on parts. There are some general safety guidelines if you are planning on using a jack and jack stands for any vehicle. Have the vehicle in the park position and make sure it is on a hard, level surface. Then check the brake fluid level at the reservoir. The brake fluid reservoir should be about half full. Monitor the fluid level while compressing the caliper piston. Before raising the vehicle, check all wheels remaining on the ground. Set the parking brake if the rear wheels will remain on the ground. And loosen the lug nuts on the wheels just enough to break them free. Lift the vehicle and support it with jack stands using the proper jacking points specified by the manufacturer. Please be aware that you should always use jack stands. Never attempt to work on an elevated vehicle held in place only by a hydraulic jack. Using a 21mm socket, remove the lug nuts and the wheel. It is best to work on one wheel at a time, leaving the other side intact as a point of reference. After removing the wheel, inspect the brake components for any signs of leaks or damage. With a 13mm socket, remove the two caliper guide pin bolts. Then remove the caliper and support it using a brake caliper hanger or a regular wire coat hanger. Please be aware that you should always support the caliper. Never allow the caliper to hang from the brake hose. Remove the pads. Then, with a 21mm socket, remove the two caliper mount bolts. The rotor can now be removed. Sometimes rust will make the rotor bind to the hub, and a mallet will be needed to loosen it. Tap both the front and back side alternating left and right, top and bottom of the rotor. Before the next step, compressing back in your caliper piston. Make certain the brake fluid is about half full. Monitor the fluid level while compressing your piston, as it may overflow. The piston has extended as the pad material wears. With new, thicker pads, you must return the piston back inside the caliper body to give the thicker pads room for installation. Using a piston compressor or a large C-clamp, place a used brake pad over the face of the piston to protect the surface from marring, and begin compressing the piston. As you turn the handle on the clamp, it will increase pressure on the piston until it becomes flush with the surrounding metal. Push the piston in slowly to prevent unsafe back pressure and damage to the ABS modulator, brake valving, or master cylinder. Monitor the brake fluid reservoir level while compressing the caliper piston and make sure it does not overflow. Then, loosen and remove the piston compressor or C-clamp used. It may be necessary to drain some fluid from the master cylinder reservoir. Clean any rust off the face of the hub mating surface with a wire brush and a hub cleaning kit. Rust or debris on the hub can cause rotor runout and lead to wheel vibration. Apply a thin film of anti-seize to the face of the hub, 
This will make it easier to remove the rotor next time. Before installing the rotor, clean it with mild soap and water. Then wipe it clean with a lint-free cloth. Now the new rotor can be installed. Please be aware when installing rotors, we recommend checking the lateral runout. This will tell you if any variation exists between the rotor and the hub to which it is mounted. Depending on the application, the maximum acceptable lateral runout can range from 3 to 5 thousandths of an inch. Click the link to find out more about lateral runout and how to properly test if your new rotors are within OEM specification. Remove the old hardware from the caliper bracket and use a wire brush to clean rust from areas where the pads or hardware contact the bracket. This helps ensure that the new hardware will sit correctly on the bracket. Then inspect and replace all hardware as needed, making sure to apply brake lube to the guide pins and pad contact points. Worn or damaged hardware can lead to noise or poor brake pad performance. Install the caliper bracket and torque the bracket bolts to the manufacturer's specification of 184 foot-pounds. Ford recommends using new bolts. Apply a small amount of brake lube on the back of the pads where they contact the caliper. Please be careful to not get any brake lube on the friction side of the pads. Then install the new pads. Install the caliper, making sure not to twist the brake hose and torque the caliper bolts to the manufacturer's specification of 27 foot-pounds. Bleed the brakes to remove any air from the brake system. We recommend bleeding the brakes every time you replace the pads and rotors. Not all vehicles have the same bleeding procedure. You should always refer to the factory service manual for the proper procedure. Please take note that after bleeding the brakes, make sure the brake fluid reservoir is filled to the max line. Do not overfill the reservoir. Install the wheel and lug nuts, then lower the vehicle back onto the ground to finish tightening the lug nuts to the manufacturer's specified torque. Follow the proper tightening sequence based on the number of lug nuts used. For most, the sequence will be done in a star pattern to ensure the hub mounts to the wheel optimally. It's most important that following the installation, you perform the break-in procedure for your new pads and rotors. With the Z36 kit, you will perform the procedure for drilled and slotted rotors. And for that, you'll need to perform a pattern of accelerations and decelerations, 40 to 5, 10 times, and then 35 to 5, 5 times. This ensures that the pads embed themselves evenly on the rotors, preventing a judder and possible future damage to your brake parts. Thank you for watching our brake installation guide on the Ford F-150 for years 2015 to 2020. Please use the chapter markers in the description to return to any section you may need to go over again. And for any further guidance, look to our other how-to videos and your vehicle's OEM repair manual. Please subscribe and click the notification bell for future updates. If you haven't yet, head over to PowerStop.com to pick up your brake upgrade kit.